Hello, my honey friends. Now we're going to watch a fantasy romance film called Beastly from 2011. Enjoy your viewing. Kyle is an arrogant high school student who believes that only such charming beauties as he are entitled to the best in life. The guy speaks unflatteringly about everyone who was not endowed by nature with excellent external features. He does this until he starts insulting a real witch. Kendra puts a curse on him and the hero's appearance becomes as ugly as his soul. To regain his attractiveness, Kyle must find a person who will love him in the form of a monstrous monster. Will he be able to fix everything, even if even his own father has turned his back on him? Handsome Kyle is running for president of the Green Committee. Kyle is firmly convinced that the world is ruled by the handsome, and he gives a great speech at the debate about his own irresistibility. He is confident in the support of the public, even though he does not care about nature conservation. Kyle openly admits this to his voters, who nevertheless respond with a standing ovation. The only one who does not applaud the smug candidate is his rival, whose name is Kendra. She hurries to leave the audience. Lindy, a modest honor student who clearly has no chance of beating Kyle, also leaves the audience. After the performance, they get an unpleasant surprise from Kendra. The girl has defaced all of his portraits with a marker. Kendra urges Kyle to withdraw from the election in favor of someone who really deserves the position. But the boy intends to continue to make his way in life through his external attractiveness, which he considers very important. He makes a comment to Kendra about her appearance. At home, however, Kyle is not surrounded by such attention. His father, Rob, is a successful businessman. He prefers to talk on the phone with his business partners and is not interested in his son's success. Only the patient housekeeper, Zola, who is already used to the habits of wealthy people, shows kindness. The next day, the boy receives congratulations on his election victory. Kendra congratulates Kyle, and on this occasion, the guy decides to show some kindness to his losing rival. As a way of reconciliation, he invites her to a party at the Green Committee's VIP club, After some thought, the girl agrees and tells him that she gives him a chance to smooth out the conflict, because only idiots insult witches. The party doesn't go well for Kyle from the start. His girlfriend scolds him for the pathetic rose he brought. The girl defiantly throws the rose away and turns her attention to Lindy, who works here as a waitress. She tells us that she is saving money for a trip to Machu Picchu and has to work for another year to fulfill her dream. Despite the fact that her shift ends in the middle of a party, Lindy has no intention of partying and wants to go home. Before doing so, she asks Kyle to take a photo with her. The guy agrees and decides to decorate Lindy's dress with a rose he has brought. He sees hopeless love in her eyes. He tells his friend that he only showed attention to the girl out of pity. Immediately, he finds a new opportunity to flatter his ego. Kendra appears in the crowd of dancers. He calls the girl tattooed and disgusting. The handsome man mocks her naivety and demands that she pay for a ticket so that she can stay at the party. However, the girl tolerates Kyle's insults and promises that he will regret his actions. These words make the guy feel uncomfortable, and later on the dance floor, he is overcome by a terrible headache that makes his eyes double. Leaving the party, he makes his way home. Kyle goes out on the balcony to breathe in the fresh night air, where, to his surprise, Kendra is waiting for him. The girl says that she came for the sake of everyone whom Kyle humiliated and insulted because of his unattractive appearance. She takes the stunned hero by the hand, and a tattoo in the form of a tree with white flowers suddenly appears on his arm, which instantly disappears. The witch declares that if the boy doesn't hear the phrase, I love you, after a year, he will forever remain the ugly monster he now sees in the reflection. At night, Kyle's father comes home. The boy meets him in complete darkness and begs him not to turn on the light. However, the father does not respond to his son's request, and to his horror, he sees his ugly face. The worried man immediately calls the doctor. Rob also despises ugly people, and in a rage, he demands that the doctor save his son from his disfigurement. The doctor says that the situation cannot be corrected even with the help of surgery and skin transplantation, but the parents disagree. They are ready to take any risk. Realizing this attitude, Kyle runs out of the room in a rage and heads to the underground parking lot, where his father catches up with him and tries to make peace, promising to think of something. The idea turns out to be to evict the ugly son from the house. The man presents his action under the benevolent pretext of organizing a quiet and safe place for his son, where no one will stare at him, and the housekeeper Zola will take care of him. Promising to call back after work, Rob leaves his son locked in this place and does not visit him anymore, citing his perpetual busyness. Five months pass, and one day, a stranger appears on Kyle's doorstep. It turns out to be a blind teacher hired by Rob named Will, who will now live with Kyle and help him with his studies. Kyle talks to Zola. It turns out that the woman has three children, whom she had to leave behind in her homeland because of problems with her documents. 
She says that she has been living with heartache for five years because of the separation from her children. Therefore, she is sure that Rob will definitely come back. However, the boy doubts her words and another message to his father, which remains unanswered, confirms his thoughts. The next morning, Kyle finds Will, who is blind, sweeping away the darts. The man already knows the story about the magic and tries to encourage and distract the boy, but he refuses the offer to do math. Instead, he immerses himself in social media. Remembering his past life, the boy finds a photo with Lindy. In this photo with the girl, he looks very inspired. At night, he decides to follow her and observes Lindy as she reads a book in her room with passion. Another time, Kyle follows her down the street. He observes the girl's everyday life and gradually feels sympathy for her. The boy's nightly outings do not go unnoticed by Will and Zola. The boy timidly realizes that he is interested in one girl. So far, he hasn't even spoken to her, but the teacher supports him. The guy has no intention of giving up and continues to watch Lindy. On another outing, he realizes that the girl is in trouble. When she returns home, she doesn't find her father and rushes to look for him in the dark streets. Lindy finds her father and when he is threatened by armed bandits who demand a lot of money. Kyle intervenes in the conflict, saving the man from mortal danger. However, during the fight, the girl falls down the stairs and falls unconscious. Kyle immediately rushes to save her, and when he returns to the scene, he sees that the girl's father has shot one of the criminals. Kyle decides to use this situation to his advantage and forces the man to let him take Lindy to a safe place, or he will provide the police with evidence of his crime. The next day, the father brings Lindy to Kyle's doorstep. They are greeted by Zolo, who tells them the fake name of the owner of the house. She says his name is Hunter. Outraged, the girl furiously chases her father away, who has now cut her off from school, friends, and normal life. She locks herself in her room and stops any attempts by Kyle to establish communication between them, including with expensive gifts. On Zola's advice, Hunter selects the next gift according to the girl's character and decides to give her a box of chocolates. He manages to overhear a conversation on the phone, in which the girl complains that her trip to Machu Picchu, which she has been dreaming about for a year, will not take place. Then Lindy notices Hunter, and they manage to talk for the first time. The girl accepts some candy and calms down by explaining that she is in the cage because her father loves her very much. Inspired, Hunter decides to write a letter to Lindy that will add to each day until the time comes to hand it to her. With Will, he discusses his next brilliant idea. He decides to build a greenhouse on the roof to plant it with roses that Lindy loves. Hunter starts working immediately and spends days on the roof. Lindy notices this and becomes curious about what is happening and the attention of the mysterious admirer. Lindy tries to strike up a conversation with Hunter herself and catches him by surprise in the living room watching TV. The guy hides his face, but her friendly attitude makes him take a decisive step. To his surprise, the girl is not frightened by her horrific appearance and promising to join Will's classes, she goes to her room. The next morning, Hunter asks the teacher to start the class and to start with poetry lessons to impress Lindy. The boy invites the girl to the greenhouse, which is already planted with roses. She is very excited about this, and Will and Zola notice their romantic mood and tactfully leave them alone. Lindy and Hunter spend carefree days together until the first rose blooms on the boy's hand. Realizing that time is running out, he goes in search of the witch. The boy desperately begs Kendra to give him more time, but she refuses, because magic cannot be undone. Having failed in his negotiations with Kendra, Kyle decides to take decisive action, and suddenly in Lindy's room, he sees his photo on her laptop desktop. The girl does not suspect that Kyle is standing in front of her and tells her that she was in love with this guy, but she talked to him only once, and then he disappeared without a trace. Then he asks Lindy out on a date and takes her to the zoo. There is his secret place where he hid as a child on the day his father told him that his mother had left them. Lindy is touched by this frankness, and feels more and more sympathetic to the monster. In his appearance, she is able to see his beautiful soul. Lindy and Hunter spend the rest of the night together on the roof, meeting the first rays of the sun. The next day, when Kyle's time is almost up, he decides to take Lindy on a romantic date to his father's cottage, which is located near the lake. There he is going to confess his love to the girl. The romantic setting inspires the girl, and she invites the guy to take a walk by the lake. There he gives her a gift and tries to kiss her, but Lindy's phone suddenly rings. It turns out that her father is in trouble again, and she urgently needs to go to the hospital. Hunter takes Lindy to the train station, where she promises to call as soon as her father is well. She stops to say goodbye, but instead of saying goodbye, he hears other words. You are a good friend. The train doors close, and the girl sits down in her seat and says goodbye to the boy. The girl unwraps the gift, about to read the letter. After learning about the boy's feelings, Lindy tries to call him for days on end, but Kylie does not answer her calls. 
However, on the eve of the girl's departure for Machi Picchi, Will and Zola managed to convince the boy to meet her for love. Putting aside his fear of showing his horrific appearance to the public, Hunter shows up at the school to say goodbye to Lindy before she leaves. He catches her a few minutes before she boards the bus. He manages to soften her hostile mood with a sincere confession about his failure to answer his phone. The girl decisively kisses the guy in front of others and is about to walk away, but stops a few steps away and confesses her love to him. Lindy gets on the bus and Kylie sees the curse, disappear in the reflection of the glass door, and his former appearance returns. He is ready to wait for his beloved to return from her trip, but the girl suddenly appears on the street. Confronted by Kyle, she tells him that she is looking for Hunter and desperately rushes down the street in search of her lover. However, the ringing of the phone in her pocket makes her realize that her favorite guy is right in front of her. 